everybody. Today I am going to continue to paint the titans that I've set out to paint, which are from the Adeptus Titanicus. I thought I'd do just a smaller video and show you what I do when I paint the armor plates. So this is how they come on a screw. All I'm going to do is basically get them face painted with a spray. I am going to leave them on the spur as well, just for the convenience of it, with the idea that it may be easier. I've not done it before, but I guess we'll see how it works out. So the paint that I chose to use today were a Corax white. Make sure that you are in a well ventilated area. It can be a danger to your health. So just please, please, please do it somewhere where you know you'll be able to air it out well. So I'd say this one was a success. Get it in a few layers. It's a nice base color. And yeah, let's carry on with the next stage, which is the actual painting. I think I'm, what I'm gonna do is just pick one of these that I've base coated, which are going to go on one of the Titans later on. And I'm just gonna show you what I do. It's really simple and basic stuff. You'll need four colors plus a shade. So, for myself, I use the Nagaroth Knight. I will be using more Ceramite White on top. It'll be Retributor Armor. And I've lost it now, but I'll be using Lead Belcher as well. And those are my four to go colors for this model. Of course, there's going to be more, but for basing, that's really it. All you need. This, I would call this more of a luxury as well. If you don't have it, you can always hand paint it as well. However, this does save a lot of stress of getting it based. It's going to come on even where with your hand, with the brush, it may end up being streaky and all that and we don't want it. Of course you can achieve it the same way with your brush but I just prefer it that way um, just makes it more simple and it's really quick and easy so yeah so that's really it and that's the four colors there I'm just gonna carry on and paint them I'll still be topping it off with the ceramite white the white that is just to make it more pure and more white as the gray does still slightly shine through but that's my choice really i just want an even coat to which the other paints will grab much easier still a small layer it does not damage the texture of the models at all um so i'm just gonna get some negroth night which i do already have on my wet palette let's check if it's actually still wet yes it is so yeah so all i need is i got some purple in there. I have my little brush. I like to do like very thin layers with my paints. I'd rather build them up from a very thin layer in multiple ones, but at least I know I don't get like a grainy texture after using it. So I think I'm just going to get with this one. So in this case, um, I were thinking of just doing one's going to be purple and one's going to be white and just making sure that everything else in here is like a, well, you may have seen already the ore hounds that I did as well and they were done in like a checkerboard style. So that's what I'm going to do here as well. But because this model is going to be much bigger, I can make the puzzle pieces much bigger. I just have to make sure that I know which side is which when these are going to be cut off. When they go on the model, they make sense the way that they would look. So yeah, it's alright to go over the lines because the paints that I'm using or you may be using if you ever do a titan like this you've thinned them down so just make sure that you do thin your paints down it'll help if you go over the lines and you go over with the next color which would be the golds 
it's not going to match her. And now that I'm realizing it, but yeah, these four colors are basically the four primary colors for the color scheme that we've chosen to do these titans in. So yeah, you really don't need much. And in, on this little piece, it is literally going to be just these colors out of the four. Um, on the other piece, it would be these two colors. <laughs> So it's not really a lot, like you don't really need a lot after getting the model um, or after getting your sets, your set of models. I'm coming close to getting this one done layering the purple down then it's just really plain and simple as getting the gold down then it'll be followed by the normal oil wash just an overall coat once let it dry then a spot check and wash once more and then I think it'll be just some highlights um, apart from that I mean that's really the way that I do this sort of Thing. Well, this is not really a wash. I mean, I'm using a base and heavily watering it down, so it's just the way that I use the color, I guess. I don't really use any paint thinners as well, so I wouldn't be able to tell you if using a thinner makes a difference. Just plain good old water <laughs> out of the tap. Watering it down, it gives you a bit more work time as well, so having them thinner will benefit, or at least does benefit me working with my paints. You can move the paint around, see where it needs to fill without worrying it to dry too quickly and for me not having enough time of shifting it to the places that I want it to shift to. So when it comes to these, well, it comes with like most paints but in particular with the metallics make sure that you shake your paints really really well as they do separate you'll see this one here that is actually the lead belcher and um, it's been sitting here for a while so even even after using it um, there's the black dye that comes out of the color and just goes on top and the metallics just sink um, just make sure, like if the paint's still fine to use, you just have to make sure that you mix it when you want to work with it or shake it when you're taking it out of the pot, otherwise you end up with the black dye, a black shade essentially with some metallic glitters in it. So a dried down retributor armor here, it's very very shiny gold metal. This one a bit more orangey because the oranges out of here have not seeped in to the paper that I was working on earlier. So. so I don't want to overpaint so now I'm just trying to work with a bit more precision so I don't mess up the actual purple. see the difference between this purple here which has had a wash on and this purple here as well. Firstly this one will need a few more layers so it's all this one and of course that one there but you can see a slight difference there. A wash really helps as well to bring the gold and the purple together so like any issues that you may have had while you were painting and never any overlining that you had done it will go invisible most cases of course like still try to do your best but a shade really does help a lot and i love using a shade don't overdo it but 
in this case, it really brings the metal and the purple together. Army Painter. It's an anti shine matte with varnish. That's what I'm going to use to coat. Then I am going to go back with the purple that I used from before and I'll go back to this one. It's watered down. It almost needs to be like a wash that gives you some colour, but not again too much, otherwise, it'll be like spots rather than a colour gradient. Okay, so I've got the varnish on. It has mattified it. But as well, it kind of like blurred it fully together. I mean, you'll see the photos on my Instagram as well, because that is where I mostly update my stuff, and which is quick and easy. All right, so what I'm going to do now is just grab one of my dry brushes. So I just use my small Citadel dry brush for this sort of thing now. So I intermittently use all three of these brushes and I will firstly start with edge highlighting. I just use the same Retributor Gold now. At an angle, just go over to bring out the shine even more. Be careful with the crest in the middle. I will use even smaller brush and um, because, well, because this brush is actually slightly curved, kind of works for me a bit better, but I use the round side off the curve and I use that to ensure that the paint does not get on the purple. But it is great for itch highlighting because that way you know you are not going to get paint in places that you don't want the paint to be in. So using the lead belcher, dry off of the paintbrush as much as you can. It just fluffs up the brush a bit. You're just gonna stroke it in random directions. I'll make it slightly more silver, uh, just not too much. I am going to use the Stormcoast silver now, which is a, wow, a new paint, I know but you can really use any light silver paint. It's a very bright silver. Just a tiny little, little bit and take that on to your palette. So now I have all the silver here. Just gonna brush off a tiny bit of it off just to see how much I have. And I'm just gonna go over gold highlight. I am not just going to use a silver, I am going to use another gold, the Liberator Gold. And that is how I do the armor plating on the Titans. Thank you so much for watching guys. You can find me on Instagram at Alinzia. I will leave that link down below as well as hostilegalaxy.com. Uh, you can subscribe to me there and you can find the exclusive snippets of the Jutsorian unboxing as well as the cutting and filing and building hemp so far at least. Uh, there will be more content coming up on there as well. But yeah, if you liked the video and you want to see more, 
please click that thumbs up and the notification bell and I will see you again soon. Bye!